Hey guys, it's From Cheng here, and I'm back with another Five Answers、uh, series where I answer any questions about Armored Core Five or Verdict Day that you have. So the first question we had today is from Esteban Romero from the Armored Core Gamers Facebook group, and he asks, "What do you think about part damage slash destruction mechanics feature that was discontinued on Gen Four and Five? How could they have worked if kept?" and Damaging slash destroying weapons, body parts, or a mix. So the overall reason I feel that they didn't include any more is just because it wasn't really workable. I've played a few games with parts damage before. The most one, the one that's most recently in mind is、uh, Full Metal Evolve, and I feel that when it comes to that mechanic, it's hard to implement because you have to basically build towards it in terms of. The mechanic being a central point of the game, otherwise it's just something that that feels tacked on, and that's not good because parts damage and the way it, it works、um, is is difficult to implement. Because in order for that whole system to actually mean something, you have to be able to one target areas to damage, and two it has to have some severe negative consequence, and. While Armored Core has been able to have the severe negative consequence part, the targeting thing has never really worked. And I feel that when you when you have to put in that mechanic in the game, it has to be slow enough that the players are able to react and actively target it. So let's say, for example, if we wanted it to work within the Armored Core games, work or work better than it was so far, you'd have to be able to target each individual part. So let's say with your FCS, you could target the head, the arms, the legs. But when you do that, it starts to get really complicated, and at that point, it I feel that overshadows the rest of the game. Now, when you're talking about Force Gen, the main reason that wasn't implemented in there is because the game was too fast. Uh, like I said just a moment ago, you have to be able to target parts, and if you can't target parts to destroy, well, it's kind of pointless, especially with how fast is everything is moving. And on top of that, fourth gen as a whole is, while the combat is fast, it、uh, when it comes to actually attacking your opponents, that may that actually takes a little bit longer sometimes, because it's it's not always hit easy to hit your opponents when they're moving, you know,、uh, basically. At a fraction of the speed of light, so that in itself would make it kind of useless. Because think about if you had just one part destroyed. Think about if you had,、uh, let's say, one of your arms destroyed, and that was one of your main weapons. Well, how are you going to kill your opponent then? Because maybe your unit as a whole needed every single part in order to function. And that's the other problem with it is that when you take into account the other mechanics of the games, they generally they don't work very well unless again. You make the parts damage、uh, a, a central element of the game, and I, and you know, I definitely don't think it would have worked in Fortune very mu- much.、Uh, when it comes to fifth gen, I would say, again, just going back to what I said earlier about how parts, how parts damage or parts destruction works, it wouldn't, it would work maybe slightly better in fifth gen, but then on the other hand, that's. It's it, unless it's a main mechanic, I don't see it working. And VD speed, the way、uh, the speed was kind of going up from five, it would have been a lot harder、um, overall just to implement it in. I definitely think it would have. It would have.、Uh, well, no, because we have armor break, and that's basically kind of the same thing. So I wouldn't. I would say that it wouldn't work very well. Just because again, speed is still an issue, and I don't see it synergizing well with most of the other mechanics of the game. And you know, honestly, that may be the reason why we have armor break. Is it's kind of the next best thing or closest thing you can get to、uh, to having you know parts damage. My personal opinion overall is I don't see it returning in any games, and I honestly don't want it to. Just because it doesn't feel like it's ever worked out. Silent Line had, you know, I think the weapons destruction, and then you had,、uh, I don't remember if Nexus has it, but Last Raven definitely had the, the where you could break parts. But overall, basically, I I don't see it ever coming back, and I don't really see a reason why it should come back. 
Next question is from Simon Pylon from the YouTube comments who asks, which me mechanics do you like about the game and which do you not like? What do you hope remains a part of Armored Core in the future from this game? So let's see. Uh, let's go with the ones I don't like first. So I don't like the three defense damage formula, although the main reason why I don't like it is is how the formula works in itself. I, I could see it I could see it being something better and something I wouldn't mind as much if they kind of reevaluated and changed how it works. But just as it is in five and verdict day, it, it, in a lot of times it feels too harsh and it makes weapons kind of worthless sometimes because they just don't have uh, a high power, which which is where most weapons will do their damage in this game. Uh, I would say. I can't really think of any other ones that I don't really like too much. Maybe one other one would be the how firing stability works, uh, you know, with the arms and how basically having a high firing stability will give your arms the ability to fire faster. That one never made too much sense to me because I feel that pushes the games too much towards weapons that, that have high power and have high fire speed. And that's not a good thing. We want to go for more tactical gameplay. And you're not going to get that if if the main thing you're going to focus on is high damage, high fire weapons. For mechanics that I like, I would say I really like scan mode and I really like wall jump. And I would like to see those in future games uh, if, if just a little bit tweaked. Wall jump in particular is a bit of a hard one just because it's kind of like parts damage where you kind of have to build the game around it. Scan mode, I think, can still work really well with just a few t tweaks. Uh, I didn't like how it was simplistic in its design, not only in how scan mode works, uh, in terms of giving you information, but also how recon works. I, I would say I kind of like glide boost, but that one's always a mixed bag, just because I don't like how it works um, in its totality. But it's something that I wouldn't mind if they kind of tweaked or fixed it a bit. Now, speaking overall, we probably will see scan mode or or wall jumping in in the future games because if if there is an Armored Core Six, because from software it usually pulls from the older games for in order to make the new ones. So, for instance, with Armored Core Four and Four Answer, when it moved on to Five and Verdict Day. It kept some elements, some design aesthetics. You can see it in the KE heads, uh, the the high boost, and kind of kind of the more quicker combat, so to speak. Uh, I can't think of any other ones off the top of my head that I that I would say I really super liked. Uh, yeah, I think that that that's about it. Next question is from Craig DM Hall from the Armored Core Legacy Facebook page. And he asks, why are there no good lightweight 3k damage KE weapons with around 60 to 120 ammo? I feel like trying to build a lightweight mech just isn't an option due to the lack of appropriate firepower. So there is some good news. We do have those weapons. They're called sniper rifles and they're probably one of the, the best weapons in the game overall and also for, for uh, lightweights because when combined with dual subcomputers, they have one of the highest damages in the game. They cannot be buffed out unless you have a shield. Uh, they fire quickly and they lock quickly too. So they're super dangerous, especially when you add on the lightweight's mobility. Now in terms of other weapons, there obviously isn't anything because when it comes to weapons with damages at those level, uh, basically most builds can't block them out and they're almost always some of the best weapons because of that reason. Kurosawa is having anywhere from about 3 to 10k damage, battle rifles with about 2700, although those, are, those aren't quite as good of an example just because they get beat out by quads and HRJs, but overall they're still super powerful. Um, I, I think if you're talking more along the lines of maybe if you're thinking like a bazooka, uh, I honestly don't have any I don't know why there isn't one in the game, although I'm assuming that if you did have something like that, it would uh, tanks would just have to drop dead at that point. 
Next question is from Brian Stewart over on the YouTube comments, and he asks, are there any hidden stats or mechanics that affect damage or control of the AC? So being an Armored Core game, there is definitely going to be a lot, and there's a lot of stats that we see and a lot of stats that we don't. Uh, overall though, we haven't focused too much in the past on those stats, and there's not a lot of research. Uh, obviously, there's, there's Armor Break, which is a mechanic where if the impact force of your weapon exceeds the recoil resistance of an AC, it will reduce its defenses by about 20% for a few seconds. And that, of course, is a, a, a big one because it balances out a lot of the three damage slash uh, three defense formula in that it stops heavier builds from just being impenetrable by getting the right defenses. Now, it doesn't work quite as well in Verdict Day because of the changes, but overall, it's one of the things that kind of balances out the other mechanics in the game. Other than that, there's there's not a lot I know off the top of my head. There was a time there was something about hitboxes and whether if you hit an AC from behind, it would do more damage because uh, it would hit more hurt boxes. But we never we never proved that or did much research on it. There's the the one I would say is most interesting is how equipping more weight on an AC affects its speed because. Much like the older games, Armored Core 5 and Verdict Day has some kind of stat in-game where once you meet a certain threshold and equip your AC over a certain weight, its speed starts to drop dramatically. So let's say you have an eight, uh, you know, a build with, let's say, 350 base speed high boost, and you go over a certain limit, it's gonna it's gonna drop significantly once you hit that once you hit that point. So let's say it goes 350, you equip something, it drops to 340, and you, and you equip another thing and it drops down to 320 or 3, 310. That's uh, one of the more interesting mechanics when it comes to ACs, but uh, I we don't really know a whole lot about it as there's not really been a lot of research or study in, in that regards. And the last question is from ZCluster101 from the YouTube comments who asks, what is a good way of using power type boosters and what is a generator for power type boosters? So for high power boosters, the main thing you want to do with them is to use the long high boost distance that it gives you to outmaneuver your opponent. It's not quite as clear in Verdict Day because everything's faster and the stats have changed a little bit. but. High power boosters give you overall greater speed in um, greater speed and greater distance in movement when it comes to high boost in exchange for higher energy costs and uh, and less control overall. I would say when it comes to lighter builds, they're all about getting around their opponents uh, much quicker. So the main thing you want to do with them is to use buildings to your advantage, boost towards them. Uh, to kind of wall jump off them and catch your opponents by surprise or get in an angle where you can shoot them. When it comes to heavier builds, they they still kind of function as almost high acceleration boosters with a high energy cost. So the main thing you want to do with them is try to stick to cover or find points where you can engage your opponent, uh, which, is a which is a little bit easier with high power boosters because uh, they, they push the heavier ACs up, uh, up a decent distance in comparison with high excels. Now, when it comes to when it comes to generators, honestly, there's not really, I would say, a clear one which is best for high power boosters, such as the Tokunatsu or BOC H11, which is the the Dafeng from Five, if I remember correctly. Usually, the one with the higher energy uh, fire energy regen and a good cap is always good so when it comes to balance GA319 the proc knee if you can fit that because it's a heavy beast and then you have the GED G23 for for uh, the, the high output the high output generators now I would not recommend using the the high capacity ones just because 
they're a lot harder to use and if you empty out you're basically dead in the water because of the higher energy requirements of uh, of the high power boosters although obviously there are exceptions like with lightweights which can kind of get away with it if if you're good enough but overall when it comes to high power boosters mainly you're looking to outmaneuver your opponent uh, by using terrain and being able to basically get to any point before your opponent does and that about wraps it up for this five answers if you have any other questions any other questions about the answers i gave to the questions or kind of anything else you're curious about when it comes to fifth gen armor core feel free to leave a comment and if you enjoy this video please like and subscribe it just lets me know that i'm doing something right and doing something that is interesting and something you want to watch and also if you could share it out to other people show some show the other armored core fans uh this video and you know let them see it a little bit thanks again for watching guys until next time Thank you.